Yes, I have often wondered, uh, and I don't know if this question has already been asked, but in case it hasn't, why does it say in 1 Corinthians 14, as in all congregations of the saints, women should remain silent in the church as they are not allowed to speak? And if they have any question, uh, they should ask their own husband, husbands at home. Well, what if you're not married like me? Uh, you know, that doesn't make too much sense to me. And uh, also, in my church, there are several women pastors. So I would like to know why it says this. Thank you. Well, this is a good question that does come up from time to time. And I've had some discussions and there's some differences of opinion, but I, I, I love that we can dive into this. Pastor Glaze, could you start us off here? Yeah, I'll kickstart this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we ha I had to wrestle with this in our church because I came from a church that didn't believe in women preachers, mm -hmm. women pastors. And so, you know, women, you know, started coming forward. And so I had to wrestle through this whole thing. And this was one of the key passages that I looked at. And there's actually four different interpretations of this particular passage. You, know, you got a guy like John MacArthur, and he'll <laughs> say that this means that women should not teach or speak right. or do anything mm -hmm. in the church. Then you have uh, somebody will say, well, the context is tongues, right. and it means that women should not speak in tongues. And then uh, somebody else will say, well, it's just referring to wives and that they should be submissive to their husbands. This is what I believe. You know, back in this culture mm -hmm. where you had uh, men who only could be, you know, the, the, the ones that could, you know, study and the ones who were uh, up on, you know, the, the, the Torah and the law. And, and so, you know, women weren't really encouraged to study. Mm -hmm. And so what happened in the church when, when things translated over into the church, you had the men on one side mm -hmm. and the women on the other side. And, you know, the pastor or the preacher might say something and the wife would ask her husband, you know, well, what, what does that mean? You know, what is he? And, and so a lot of people say what Paul is saying here is, you know, let the women be silent. You know, don't ask questions, mm -hmm. you know, in the assembly, but wait till you get home to ask your husband. And this was not the type of thing where they were putting women down, but it was a type of thing that the men were educated and the women weren't back during this time. But praise God to this lady's, uh, you know, question that, you know, we live in a day when men and women have access to education, theological, ex uh, so, you know, again, you know, I think that this scripture was contextual and it was related specifically to this time where today women can educate themselves in the word of God theologically. And so, you know, they don't, they don't have to depend on anybody else to tell them anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Pete. Uh, let me read the verse because I agree exactly with what Doc said. First, first Corinthians 14, it says this, if they want to learn something, meaning again, what you were saying, Doc, let them ask their husbands at home. Mm -hmm. So it's right within the text that they were disrupting uh, the teachings so this of this is a cultural thing that right. we don't exactly. really understand exactly. Exactly. Yeah. today. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it says, for it's a shameful thing. And, and as, as, as Dr. Glay said, it's the idea that the men were educated and ladies, we didn't write this. We, we're Amen. not declaring, uh, the men were educated and the ladies weren't. That, that was the cultural thing, but they sure have come a long way. They and did. I tell you what, I had some great Bible, uh, teachers at Bible school that were females and they could really out preach a lot of the male preachers. Well, that brings us to this whole other thing. And so I, I want to kind of dive into this about women pastors, because we still have denominations, mm -hmm. uh, that's strongly. And I liked your four points over there, Dr. Glaze about different, four different interpretations, but well, just take us, take us through that, that whole situation. Yeah, I think one of the things too, I think what, what I like that that passage still preserves is the hierarchy of the home that the man's still the head of the home. That's really what you can take out of that. No matter what's going on in the church, how the context of the church shifts, the, uh, the, how the culture it, it's happening, it's still the women and the man, the man is still the head of the home. And I think that is a, a very important part that needs to be taught on more, uh, if I'd say that. But uh, going to the women's pastors, uh, I, you know, personally, I do not have a, a, you know, an issue with it, but I have seen so many lady pastors that struggle in that position. That's just my, from my observation. I'm not saying about right or wrong, but it seemed like whenever I've seen a woman as a lead senior, a lot of them struggle. Um, I, some that I've known, I'm not saying it's every single person. I'm not saying it's a rule of thumb, but I have noticed there's a struggle with them. Uh, there's always some other issues that are going on in there. Um, that's just something that I pulled. Now, as far as a, a woman in an associate pastor role, thing like that, I haven't seen that as much, or teaching, yeah. I have no issue. And I don't have an issue 
yeah. with a woman being. But I just noticed it just it's, just doesn't always seem to flow right. There's always yeah. some issues that always seem to break out in there and there's always issues that go on. So I've always wondered if that's not God's best way, but I believe it can be a permissive way. Yeah. Okay, well, we're, we're gonna, J J Joel, I'm gonna have to hold you up yep, there. No we gotta jump into the next question here, but good question. Let's go to our next one.